looks over there. So as I give Martha that thumbs up, we're going to be on our way. You guys got your snacks, everything? You ready to go? Woo! Oh, cool. <laughs> Looks like we got people with their cameras. We got Dean. He's one of our drivers out there taking photos. Hey, Dean, what's up? <laughs> got all sorts of things. All right, it's go time. Let's wake up. Bye. 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 Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, some important pieces of safety information. First, if you have a medical emergency or drop something of value off the side of the tram or have any major sound or video issues, reach out and grab that red emergency cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram and return to a seated position. I'll come back to assist you as soon as it is safe to do so. Otherwise, show this entire tour. The studio is private property. You must stay on board this tram. Do not disembark for any reason unless otherwise instructed. Keep your arms, legs, and personal items inside the gates at all times and remain seated. As a reminder, there's no smoking, vaping, or use of selfie sticks allowed. If you prepare, this tour will feature loud noises, sudden tree movements, fire effects, and water effects. Lastly, you don't have to wear those 3D glasses quite yet. Just hang on to it. Oh, well, I'm Emily, the tour guide. we got Martha behind the wheel. It's now time to set sail. Or, I guess, that will the metal here. We're going to be heading down into our timeline. We're going to go over a little history of where it all began. Ago. On March 15th, our founder, Carl Bentley, invited the public into the studio to watch silent movies being made. Guests could walk from set to set, marvel at the new technology involved in filmmaking. But with the invention of sound and the need for quiet on the set, the original walking tour ended. But in the 1960s, under leadership of company chairman Lou Wasserman and executives Al Dorsky and Jim Stein, the idea of reviving a tour of the studio returned. Bus tours reaching in Hollywood made a stop at our gates. <laughs> On July 15, 1964, the first of our red and white candy striped glamour trams took 67 passengers on a two hour driving tour of the Universal Bat, and the world famous studio tour was born. We started with two drivers, two guides, one ticket seller, working on a trailer on Lakers and Boulevard. From there, the studio tour expanded with fantastic, one of a kind Hollywood elements like the Burning House and the Rock Slide, which are this area of the lot back in the 1970s and 80s. <laughs> Other fun thing today, you're actually riding on one of our amazing 60th anniversary glamour trams with this red and white candy striping. It is one of our super trams, but dressed up in throwback style. This red and white, uh, this red and white vehicle was originally designed by Harper Rock, a well-known Hollywood art director and set designer Chocolate Factory for Paramount was known for his fantastical designs. By 1983, we upgraded to our Super Trams, allowing us to carry more guests and experience more thrills. Then in 2000, we finally added the onboard video, turning the tram into a movie theater experience on wheels. In the past five years, we've gone electric. So cool, cool stuff. We're on one of the classics, though, dressed up in that throwback style. So hope you got some pictures. So that's that popcorn bucket some of you guys have. And now we're going to really start our tour by heading down into what we call the front lot. As you look around, you're going to start seeing these large black and white buildings everywhere, which we call sound stages. And this is where about 80 to 90 percent of all of filming takes place. So a sound stage is like a big empty warehouse here. Uh, this one over here on our left-hand side is our famous Stage 12, one of the oldest stages we have here on the lot. It's home to classic scenes you see on screen, like 1931's Frankenstein and Dracula, other modern favorites, including Back to the Future, and even Jurassic Park, all filmed on these stages. Wow, oh, so much fun. We love to see it. We're going to be heading down into uh, some of our more modern spaces here on our left hand side. Uh, this is where we do shows like the Kelly Clarkson Show before she moved to New York, also Hacks on HBO Max, and many more. But back uh, in the earlier days of the studio, this area was actually home to famous event spaces that we could do. We had step off experiences, we could check out uh, Lucille Ball's dressing room, we could also check out the costumes of costume designer Peter Head and so much more. That was all here on the front lot. Uh, front lot. Obviously now we are home to a Super Nintendo World that's actually just on the other side of these walls here on your right hand side. So as you can see, it's always evolving. Even though we do have a Super Nintendo World on the other side of us, we still make 
movies, well, they always have the big name, and TV shows as well. And actually, we are passing by the stages and introducing you to the stars that work right here. And that is Jabari Banks and Ali Shawlton of the Peacock series, Bella. For the past 60 years, studio tour visitors have driven right by these buildings and inside these walls and such view paper, TV shows, movies have transported audiences anywhere the imagination can take you. Even to a palatial mansion in Bel Air. When we film Bel Air, we love coming out of the sound stages and seeing the transport of exotic guests as we drive by. So, uh, keep an eye on it. You never know. Or what? Let's see what we're doing. One of the many stages that Jabari and Ollie work on is stage 14. We're passing by now on our left hand side. Uh, they just finished up season 30, so you'll be able to catch those episodes on Peacock very soon. Uh, Bella isn't the only TV show that is filmed here on the lot, though. Coming up on our right hand side, we're about to pass some of our smaller stages. These are mostly being used for sitcoms. They've got the classics like The Jeffersons, The Monsters, we even had Sabrina, The Teenage Witch, and The American Gladiators. Like Auditions for uh, American Gladiator out on City Walk. Highly recommend checking out some of that old footage from the 90s. People all lining up to be a part of the TV show history. All right here. For very recently, we had a spectacular profile movies here, including the Academy Award winner for Best Motion Picture, Oppenheimer, starring Hillary Murphy, which you can see now on the top. We're losing scenes on the stage right, which we're about to pass by on our right hand side. Oppenheimer is Universal's eleventh winner for Best Motion Picture of the Academy Awards, so we'll see if we'll top off to our history now. Now we go on our left hand side, I want to point out these little production bungalows. You can actually see Ted hanging out in front of them because Ted has his own TV series. Take a look. Hi everyone, Seth So yes, you are going to see a bit of the downtown Boston in just a moment, but I wanted to point out that you just heard the voice of Sam McFarlane, who is more than just the voice of Ted, who's actually one of the producers on the show as well. Go back and left, we have office spaces for other producers, including Mark Platt and Mark Productions. They're going to be working on the film adaptation of Wicked. It's a long-running Broadway musical. It's in its big screen moment. We have Ariana Grande and Tony Award-winning actress Cynthia Arrivo. Also went to Illumination Entertainment. They brought us the Minions, Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, and all the Sing and Despicable Me movies. Really good animated features. Some of the highest grossing animated features, in fact, of all time. All right here in our offices. But now we're going to take you away from the offices and actually show you a combo platter, both offices, and production studios. Over here on your left, you're going to see this gray building with the big windows. And this is an office that's built directly into a soundstage, and they are working on two different productions, one being Lopez vs. Lopez, starring George Lopez, alongside his real-life daughter, Maya Lopez, and a brand new show that's not even out yet called St. Dennis Medical. And that stars David Allen Green and Wendy McClendon Covey in a medical comedy um, from Michael Spencer. So some fun options there. But now we're officially going to take you away from the front lot and bring you into the back lot where we have uh, some pretty cool things coming up. On your right hand side, an entire city is about to come into view here. Uh, this is where we house our large scale exterior sets, our metropolitan sets that we turn into any major city that you need. This was Boston in the 10th clip that you saw just a couple moments ago. Uh, also, it's a fun classic film from the 90s, including Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, where the upcoming culprit is coming to Pastor. He went looking for his uncle's renovated apartment, but when he ends up running into the wet bandits, just over there on the right hand side, where you see those steps. This is exciting, though. Uh, you can see a little bit of production work happening on our right. I believe this is for a new show called. Uh, 
classic spy with Ted Danson. It's an official production. We're going to do a little bit of different stuff over here. And also, St. Dennis has been using this area as well. Now, I do want to point out over across the way those steps where we used Home Alone 2. So you just see them in action. It's another movie stars here. Over and over and over again. A little residential area of Big City. Now we're going to take you to a smaller part of town. Uh, we call Courthouse Square, but we're entering what you might know as Hill Valley for the future. Oh, Michael J. Fox, and Christopher Boyd. And the terms of this is Courthouse Square. And there's Doc Brown. Hi, Doc. And that clock tower for Doc. Part is that bolt of lightning that said, Marty, fly back to the future. Hi, Doc. What's up? Famous clock tower here from Back to the Future. Let me show you on the other screen just for a second. See what Marty looked like in 1985. <laughs> hey, Doc, do you remember this young looking fellow, Marty? He was here with you right here. <laughs> so on screen, you can see Marty here and exactly where he was all those years ago. Isn't that amazing? Uh, we haven't seen Marty right now, though. Have you? Yeah, I mean, Marty, if you're hiding on this tram, now stop to kind of pop out and check it out. I don't see him. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Well, hope you find him, Doc. Good luck with the timelines, okay? Good stuff. All right, let's wave goodbye to Doc, it looks like. <laughs> Leaving the big little, little town behind. We're going to be heading to our big apple in just a moment. And check out our New York Street here, just around the corner from the Hill Valley. So New York Street is actually one of the busiest areas of our block. Jason did her first solo music video called Flowers. She was here all day and all night long. We were oh. dancers bringing that all to life. So we'd like to see you on the edge of glory music video. So it's moments, of course, with the princess herself, the Miss Princess Bright, from her on So the World Dance music video. But long before all these musicians were here, uh, another great star was here. And I am talking about King Kong. Here is star of the 2005 King Kong, Jack Black, to tell you about our old attraction that once laid here. Did you know the Metro Central once the home of Hollywood's biggest star? Right here is where the original studio tour King Kong attraction resided from 1986 until 2008. He stood 30 feet tall and weighed in at 13,000 pounds. Over the years, millions of guests got to meet King Kong face to face. So close you get to feel his hot banana breath. <laughs> uh, good stuff there with Jack Black. And what's really fun is that, of course, we have that attraction in our New York sets. Because that entire city is only about the equivalent of four city blocks, but it is based on New York itself. Uh, three hours getting to New York City, but fortunately today we're not going to take that long of a trip. Instead, we're going to leave the city behind and head into the jungle. So here is Peter Jackson to tell you about his version of King Kong. It's the original King Kong.
You might be wondering, is actually any vehicle that you see on the screen. So technically a train could be a picture car, a bike, a boat, or in our case specifically, a tram. But I, I'm sure you guys want to see something a little more exciting than the tram you've been sitting on. So still got those cameras out, I hope, as we take you into our real collection. I do want to point out a of my favorites here in the collection, but they all have the signs behind them that tell you what movies and TV shows we are from. First up, from uh, American Graffiti. Deuce Coop here. Uh, and this film was actually directed by George Lucas before he'd go on to Star Wars fame. Also starred a young Ron Howard coming off his TV career before he'd become a pretty prominent director himself. Had some custom builds from the Back to the Future franchise. And it took us to the future of 2015, you know. <laughs> um, my personal favorite. We have the Weasley Family's Flying Car from Warner Brothers, Harry Potter, <laughs> and the Chamber of Secrets. Really cute there. On the end, take a look at uh, the gyrosphere from Jurassic World, a custom build. And as you can see, they don't have the glass on it either, because that was actually digitally added afterwards for safety for the actors, and because glass kind of makes it tough to film things for reflections, so it just easier to add it in. But now, we're going to the next exciting part we're entering now, the Jurassic Park area, because dinosaurs are in our DNA here at Universal, and they've been a part of the studio tour for three decades. We hardly have room in the paddock for our expanding collection and actually uh, look we have a t-rex just in time for our 60th anniversary t-rex is coming up here on your right hand side Ooh, exciting things and i'm excited to tell you that the new era of the franchise will begin on july 2nd 2025 with jurassic world 4 as we enter the jurassic forest here and here is the star of the jurassic world franchise to tell you about it hi chris pratt so for many years, this part of the studio tour was the Greens Department, where we keep real plants and trees that could be used as set dressings for TV shows and movies. Nowadays, it's where you can see many of the set pieces used in the Jurassic films, including some plants and trees, except these are Just like the dinosaurs were out here. At least... I don't think the dinosaurs were But now we're actually going to take you into another area and show off a practical effect. And uh, here to take you into our classic 
toxic attraction here on the back lot, the flash flood. Here's today's show co-host and weather anchor, Al Roker. When it comes to film and TV, it is truly a special effect. In fact, to demonstrate how weather effects are created, we can do our first major attraction here on the studio tour way back in 1968. just for the rain. You've had plenty of this in Southern California the last couple weeks. Too much of it. You guys are here for the big stuff. So uh, let's let the special effects team show us how it's done. Here comes our favorite attraction from 1968, the flash flood in all of its glory. Woo! Woo! Take cover, folks! Hollywood's greatest stars right here in a little town that we call Six Points. The Westerns, you know, they kind of take place in desert scenes. And we're actually going to take this corner and instead take you all the way to this body of water here on the left that we call the Hollywood Ocean. Here's this another little fun thing about the journey. In 1974, we added the parting of the Red Sea to the studio tour, inspired by the classic film The Ten Commandments, a weird not picture. Star movie Charles Heston made the appearance to part the waters for our guest. The glamour tram seemed to drive right through the lake and give everybody on board a sea level view. <laughs> not the only creature to call Universal home. In fact, you're about to enter an area of our lot called Little Europe. In the early days of Hollywood, this was home to Universal's most iconic resident, the Universal Monster. It's one of the great ideas 
episodes were so iconic was because if you want to go see a movie in the early 1900s, it was possibly the first time you'd ever seen such a thing. It was a brand new piece of technology and entertainment. Of course, our founder, Carl Lundley, wanted to show people how it was done. But these movies showed you special effects makeup, uh, mysterious creatures that didn't actually exist as well. That you wouldn't get to see in your everyday life. That's like uh, England in uh, the Elizabeth Land story called Rains that just celebrated its 90th anniversary, as well as Paris in uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, starring by Jane, and that just celebrated its 100th anniversary. Actually, here on our right hand side, you actually see a famous location from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. This area here is what we call the Court of Miracles. That's where all the villagers used to hang out with their torches in their bench forms. Uh, good stuff with those angry villagers. You know, they had their moment, but now I like to think that there's happy villagers like us who travel through that town. And just to let you know, folks, we're now about halfway through the tour or so, so once again, if you need anything at all, please reach up, grab that red emergency cord above you, I'll come help you out as soon as it is safe to do so, but otherwise, sit back and enjoy our time together. Oh, it looks like we're actually pulling up on stage 50 here, which is pretty dang exciting, because we haven't been able to go in here for quite some time. Uh, this was formerly the home of our earthquake attraction. I know so many of us have loved that earthquake attraction. And if you've been on that, you like it, you miss it? Yeah, lots of people have been like, we haven't been on that in a long time. And the reason we got rid of it was because we were renovating this to become a new state-of-the-art soundstage. And, but uh, we actually have some filming in progress signs, but the green, there's a green light, so we should be fine to check it out. So this is brand new, folks. We've completely renovated soundstage 50 to a modern, fictional subway station. Well, like I said, this is a live set, folks. We don't want to be
Disneyland just reopened today for our 60th anniversary with a complete Hollywood makeover of updating all those props and making the equipment to finally bring it into the 21st century. Uh, and as you know, that actually has been used in real movies and TV shows, including uh, an episode of Bones. Take a look. Put some other digital effects in here to really soup it up. or anything, so we're just going to stay on board the tram and visit Amity Island, where every day is the 4th of July, according to Mayor Vaughn. Heard of him? Yeah, in 1975, he was definitely pretty famous when this water was infested by one man-eating great white shark. <laughs> you know what? That was like almost 50 years ago. We should be fine. Wait, do you guys hear that music? One thing I've heard, I've learned working here, if you hear a John Williams soundtrack, something's about to go down. So everybody remain seated, keep your arms and legs inside the gates, and we do not want to become shark bait. Hey, George, you see anything out there? That's my buddy George, he's doing a little expert. George, there's something in the water! No! This is terrible! No! Oh dear, that red stuff can't be good, can it? Oh man, George? This. But you know, Amity needs friendship, so maybe we can just try to befriend the shark. It'll be a good time. <laughs> Alright. That can't be good either. I hear they keep like bait in that barrel out there. Oh, 
house is also once home to the very quirky Munster family from the Munsters, a 1960s sitcom. Their address at the show was 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Well, you may recognize this as Wisteria Lane, the ABC drama Desperate Housewives. on this show, like, have a tornado tear through this town, and that's totally okay, because none of these houses are real. I mean, not in the sense that they have, like, you know, real rooms or plumbing or electricity. So it is interesting that despite not having those basic amenities, of all people, Beyonce would show up to build her lemonade stand for a recent Super Bowl commercial just a couple months back. So uh, she was out in front of this brown house coming up on your left-hand side. Craziest part? They filmed that commercial during the day with the studio tour happening. Louise bypassed this little area so no one knew that she was there. Uh, the tour guides, until, of course, the spot aired. And we're like, wait, that's Colonial Street. So we really got stuff. A couple of fun ladies to point out. Over here on your right hand side, this little yellow house was home to Davey from Never Have I Ever. Uh, Davey played by my trainee, Ramakrishna, and the show you catch on Netflix. A really fun team teenage comedy, and actually speaking of teenagers, there was one more teenager who was running around the lot here, we mentioned him earlier, that was Mr. Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, and where he lived in the movies was a little fictional town called The Lion Estates, and if you keep an eye out on your left hand side, you might be able to actually see a little bit of The Lion Estates cross, little entryways to Marty's town, but I gotta let you know, these ones are not the actual ones from the movies, but they are replicas that were made for the 30th anniversary. That's kind of funny because in the movie when Marty shows up, his house isn't there. So we just have the signs of no houses, just like poor Marty McFly. <laughs> also a pretty fun thing too, about Back to the Future. So uh, the courthouse area that we went into, where the clock tower was, that was also the area where they filmed the very first episode of Rod Serling's The Twilight Zone, you know, that's the 1960s series. And Rod Serling made a Another TV series called The Night Gallery, and who directed an episode of that but Steven Spielberg himself. So it's all connected, and actually right now, we are on Steven Spielberg Drive. So there's just a little bit more for the man himself on how he got started here in Hollywood. Some of his earlier works, his first full length features. Oh, yeah. Of course, with Jaws, that is when his career would change forever. It is actually very appropriate that at the end of Steven Spielberg Drive, we actually have one of his most iconic and most elaborate sets ever created, and that is the crash site of his film, War of the Worlds. So in just a moment, you're about to see a real 747 aircraft come into view here. They made this look like the aftermath of an alien invasion in a real neighborhood called Bayo, New Jersey. So what they did for the film, they took an establishing shot of the real neighborhood on the East Coast, and then recreated it here in Hollywood to make it look like this disaster. So we're, empty, we're coming on in, and once again, folks, this is a real plane. You see how they use it in the film alongside Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning. plane was used in like five minutes of film, it's still, because of its scale, one of the most iconic movie sets in Hollywood history. 
Actually, from one great movie set and one great director to another, coming up here on your right hand side is actually one of the most recognizable sets here in Hollywood. And this is the home of the notorious Norman Bates from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. <laughs> I dare you to look up in that upstairs sun window. Mother might be home. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> This film definitely terrified the audience in the 1960s because people saw things on screen they had literally never seen before, including the very first flushing toilet. <laughs> but honestly, that's not that terrifying. <laughs> We're actually going to take a little closer look at the Bates Motel and a little bit more because actually right now, for the first few, we are actually going back to see something pretty cool, pretty iconic because we're the first few decades of the studio tour, one of our hallmarks was to visit a prop plaza where guests could disembark for a once in a lifetime photo experience and interact with characters, vehicles, and props from their favorite production. So guess what? For our 60th anniversary, we've brought that opportunity back. <laughs> All right, so, so remember, this is going to be a limited stop, but when you are ready to continue your tour, simply follow the signs and you'll be boarding possibly a different tram. It might be the same one, because I think we're the first ones out of here, so you might come back with me anyway. So make sure you bring all your personal belongings, bring your 3D glasses as well, folks. <laughs> all right, I'll see you on the other side, okay? Have fun.